This lecture will deal with the theory of color developed by the famous German poet and author Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. It is by now already 200 years since his Farbenlehre was published, but it has become a classic in the field and is still actual and inspiring. Goethe introduces his work with the following words. The desire for knowledge is first stimulated in us when remarkable phenomena attract our attention. For it to continue, we must find a deeper sympathetic connection, which will lead us by degree to a deeper acquaintance with the subject. From this we get the idea of his approach to color, as well as to knowledge in general. He speaks about the desire, even the pleasure of knowing things, and he speaks about the engagement that makes one committed. The result will be an acquaintance with the things we study, a kind of practical knowledge based on personal experience. But who was Goethe? What made him so interested in color? Let me point at a few events in his biography of relevance for our topic. He was born in Frankfurt in 1749. His father was a lawyer and wanted his son to follow in his footstep. It was, however, as poet and author that he became famous and admired. The young Duke Karl August of Weimar was impressed by Goethe's lively mind and invited him to join him. Goethe accepted the invitation and moved to Weimar in November 1775, where he was to remain for the rest of his life. He became a close advisor to the Duke, and it wasn't long before he was appointed minister. However, after 11 years, at the age of 37, he found his administrative duties boring and embarked incognito on a journey to Italy, whose cultural treasures he had long nurtured a desire to see. He describes his arrival at Rome as being born anew. In Rome, he entertained lively discussions with artists he met about the appropriate use of color in painting. Nobody could give him satisfactory information, so he made up his mind to find a true basis for guidelines for the way in which color is used in painting. At the same time, he admired the wonderful colors of flowers and on the sky, here we see a watercolor drawing he made during his travel. Notice the colors on the sky, blue, pink, yellow. We will meet this series of colors again. After his return to Weimar, he wanted to learn about color science. He started by looking through glass prisms, such as these, triangularly shaped to experience the multicolored spectrum that Newton had based his color theory on a hundred years earlier. And Goethe was astonished from what he saw. If you look through a prism, the world becomes lively colored, overwhelmingly complex, at least as it seems. But what he saw looking towards the bars of a window against the bright sky, was even more remarkable. Namely, it seems that color only appears at the borders, where bright and dark areas meet. This observation made him obsessed with an ambition to find out exactly how these things work. There seems to be some laws governing the world of color. After all, he studied simple pictures in black and white, as, for instance, this checkerboard pattern. Here the prism is held horizontally and the pattern rotated. There is a quite simple law behind the seeming complexity of the first impression. Look at a simple border between dark and light. The prism is held horizontally. As soon as you rotate the pattern, colors appear. 
alternatively blue colors and yellow colors. These are the so-called boundary spectra, a transition from white via yellow, orange and red to black. Alternatively, from black via blue-violet and turquoise to white. See what happens when we let the two kinds of boundary spectra partly overlap. Here, red meets dark blue and results in a spectrum with purple between yellow and turquoise. To recognize the colors of the sky in Goethe's watercolor from Italy. Changing over to the opposite condition, we let yellow and turquoise meet, resulting in a spectrum with green in the middle, between red and dark blue. There are essentially four basic prismatic spectra. The first two are the complementary boundary spectra, the yellow one and the blue one. It struck Goethe that this finding corresponded to what the artists maintained, namely that there are warm colors and cold colors. This aesthetic principle thus seemed to have a foundation in physical optics. Furthermore, when these two elementary spectra are forced to overlap, you get new spectra containing shades of green and purple. This picture shows all four kinds of spectra. The upper picture to the right shows the well-known Newtonian spectrum with red, green and blue-violet. The lower one shows the complementary or inverted spectrum with yellow, purple and turquoise. And that is all. The four types of spectra constitute all possible colors attainable by spectral modification of light. When Goethe saw all this, it struck him that Newton must have missed an essential point about color, namely the importance of both light and darkness. Color is based on contrast. It is not fair to say that colors are in light, they are created between light and dark. These findings inspired him to publish in 1791 the booklet Beiträge zur Optik, from which this illustration is taken. The main actors are presented, the sun, the eye, and optical instruments, a prism and a mirror, together with remarkable natural phenomena, such as the rainbow. Physicists of the day, however, failed to appreciate his contribution, which they felt was an attack on the famous Newton. Goethe, however, stubbornly started to gather all facts he could find around color, making further experiments and observations, as well as taking down what he found about color in literature going right back to the ancient Greeks. The idea was to build a kind of encyclopedia of color consistent with the spirit of the Enlightenment. It was not until 20 years later, in 1810, that he finally published his Entwurf einer Farbenlehre as a kind of multidisciplinary study of the phenomenon of color. Let us take a look at the various chapters of this book.